Awesome teams don't emerge by accident. Teams doesn't become great thanks to a lucky personality constellation. A great scrum master or a great manager of course have their part to play, but the biggest success factor is always the engagement from the actual members of the team. It's as simple as a conscious decision from each member of the team to engage in the work involved building a strong team and the willingness to learn the necessary tools for that. What work and tools are you referring to, you might wonder? What can I do as a team member to help my team grow strong and become successful? Well, there are important dialogues you could engage in, many activities that need to happen and plenty of workshops you could propose. Let me present a model that tries to capture and describe what you can do to help make your team awesome. I call the model 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 team success factor. I've split these factors into four groups. The first group describes four dialogues we need to have together as a team, followed by three aspects of hard work. Then we have two dialogues I need to have with myself. And the final one is about how we communicate with the organization around us. Let's start with the dialogues we need to have in our team. First of all, ensure that your team have an inspiring mission and a clearly defined short-term goal. If the team you're in doesn't have spent time formulating a vision, that's where you start. What's your purpose, your mission? Who are your customers? If you lack a mission, how could you possibly have a valuable conversation about prioritization or align on long-term strategies? But more critically, without it, how would you know that the future of this team is something that you want to be part of? But even more important is to ensure that you as a team always have a clearly defined next goal. That goal shouldn't lie more than a few weeks into the future. This is crucial. How does the closest finishing line look like? Without this, you actually don't have a reason to collaborate and unite as a team. To work efficiently together, you need to discuss and agree upon how you want to work. Your working agreements. How does your process look like? And what's your routine when releasing? Code of conduct. What behaviors do you expect from each other? How do you make decisions in the team? And membership. Who do you consider part of the core team versus a partner or a stakeholder? And if you have roles within the team, what mandate and expectations are put on those? You want to make the most important agreements explicit by writing them down, either on a whiteboard or in a digital format. This will help you have more constructive discussions about how to improve them and to hold each other accountable for honoring them. For you to be able to efficiently self-organize around work, you and your team need to spend time learning the strengths of others. To figure out who should work on what, you need to learn who has which skills and what others' motivations are. What do people want to learn? Where do they want to grow? As a team, you always want to reach a state where you appreciate that you are different and contribute in different ways. Not only in terms of complementary skills, but also in terms of background, attitudes and personalities. Initially, you might be frustrated that someone is always too eager to try anything new or that someone else always raises concerns and problems. He might instantly drive into details while she needs to understand the bigger picture first. But when you figured out how to appreciate all the different ways you enrich in the dialogue, that's when sparks happen. The final dialogue you can contribute to in the team is alignment on long-term strategies. What are the properties of a great architecture? How does beautiful code look like? A great test process. And what's your long-term strategy to get there? For you as a team to be able to have tough and heated discussions and trust that you can resolve them, it truly helps to know that you want to move in the same direction and that you share similar values. You might also need to align on long-term strategies with other people and other teams. For example, you might have dependencies or maybe you're building different parts of a bigger whole. These were 14 dialogues you can initiate and engage in. Next follows three aspects of hard work. Talking and discussing is not enough to build a strong team. That you continuously need to create opportunities for yourself to actually work and deliver together might be obvious. Splitting tasks during sprint planning together and having daily stand-ups doesn't qualify as collaboration. That's coordination. It's only through collaboration you unleash your collective brain power, get to know each other and build strong bonds of trust. Sit next to each other, discuss problems and help each other out. Try pair programming or maybe even mob programming. The next thing we need to do is to gather, seek and provide feedback. How well does our product and services meet the needs of our customers? Are we improving over time? Is our quality getting better? Is our productivity increasing? We also need to provide feedback to each other on behaviors or when we break our working agreements. 
Providing feedback to each other is as important as anything else when we're building a strong team and when we're helping each other's grow. The shorter the feedback loops, the better. To adopt fast, we need to learn fast. To learn fast, we need to continuously ask ourselves how can we get faster feedback? How can we shorten the feedback loops? The final aspect of work is to ensure that we rapidly conduct experiments and learn from them. When I say experiments, I refer both to testing new features and possible product paths through prototypes and A-B testing, and then learn from our feedback loops what works and doesn't work, and adopt our plan accordingly. But to become faster and more productive as a team, we also need to experiment with our processes, our ways of working, the way we build our products and services. Many who do Scrum, the most popular Agile framework, emphasizes that the sprint retrospective is the single most important event. Pausing work to reflect upon what works well and what doesn't, and then adopt and try new things is key. The return of time invested can't be understated. And then we have two dialogues you need to have with yourself. There will come a time, sooner or later, where you will be faced with a choice. Is this the team I really want to be in? Am I prepared to put in the necessary energy and commitment? Do I really want this team to be successful? Am I prepared to put the team above myself? This is a choice you ultimately need to make. If you come to the conclusion that you don't care enough, or you realize that you'd rather be somewhere else, you're being unfair both on yourself as well as your team. Talk to your manager, change team, or look elsewhere for new adventures. You hold the power to initiate this change. Furthermore, your team members have probably already felt your disengagement. Consequently, they don't dare to trust your commitment as much as they want to. This in turn will undermine the whole team's ability to collaborate and focus on results. But on the other hand, if you decide that yes, this is the team I want to be in, then you need to decide if you accept that you have a shared responsibility in making this team successful. Do I accept that it's as much my responsibility as everyone else to act on failures when things go wrong? To seek opportunities for improvements? To put myself inside the solution as opposed to point at the problem? And to care for the well-being and growth of my friends in the team? What shared responsibility means for you as a team is of course something you need to discuss and should be reflected in your team agreements. Finally, as you grow stronger as a team, you need to become better at projecting clear expectations on the organization around you and on your closest leaders and managers. Your success is depending on the support you get and the trust given to you. Trust in that you want to do a great job, are capable of doing a great job, and trust in that you always try to do the responsible thing given your best understanding. To accomplish this, you need to ask for a clear description of what is within your mandate to decide, what questions you own, what power is delegated to you, and when do you need consent or approval from others. What expectations are put on you? How do you expect to behave as a team? What does success look like through the eyes of others? You also need to ask for support to form direct partnerships with those that you are depending on, so that you can have a direct dialogue instead of going through middle hands. That's it! Hopefully nothing weird or controversial. My hope is that by condensing it all into a model like this, it's easier for you to see what you can do to make your team great. I've found the model useful in many different situations. When teaching about Agile and Scrum, I use it to describe what teamwork is all about and to summarize what is expected from a member of an Agile team. You can use it as a retrospective format. What are we good at? In which areas do we have the biggest improvement potential? From this discussion, you extract actions and changes to your working agreement. I've seen people have them as personal reminders by their desk. And I also find it useful when coaching teams. It helps me evaluate where they are and what I could focus on next. The thoughts and ideas captured in this model are not mine. But it is my attempt of summarizing them into something that is easy to digest, understand and use. If you're familiar with these great authors and their books, you probably recognize a lot and see connections to their theories and models. If you haven't already, I strongly recommend reading their work. If you want to download a printable poster of the 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 team success factors, you can find it here at blog.crisp.se slash team success factors. And once again, thank you for hanging around to the end. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and that you found it useful. And if you did, make sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up. My name is Jimmy Andlian. I'm an Agile coach, member of the consultant company Crisp in Stockholm. If you're looking for ways on how you can visualize work and process, 
Perhaps you will enjoy my book Visualization Examples. Until next time, bye bye.